Ah, welcome back. This time, let's skim some cylinder heads. So the job today is to skim this cylinder head. Um, and uh, unusually, we've got to go down to a size. So um, I'm going to be aiming for 2.71 inches on this one. And that's a thickness uh, between the top face and the bottom face. I've just checked this one and she varies between 2.748 and 2.749 all the way over so hopefully we can better that as well and get that nice and parallel um, the top face is staying the same uh, we just need to take a good uh, good 40 thou off the top of the uh, off the face of the head uh, and that's done to bring the compression ratio up for the application in this in this particular case right first off let's load the cylinder head onto the mill clamps on so I use uh, little um, custom made clamps which I made up to go through the valve guide holes and that just holds the uh, head onto the mill nicely Just get them lined up and put the cylinder head on. Now, one thing you want to do before you put a cylinder head onto a machine table is you want to make sure that the bottom face that's sat on the machine bed is flat and free of burrs. And I've already put a file across the bottom side of that before I put it onto the machine. And you know when they're right because they glide on the, on the machine table. If they don't, then you know you've got a problem. The other thing you want to do is give it a rock. There's no rock on this head, so that means that she's basically flat, which is good. So we'll get that screwed down. I use a Milwaukee uh, battery screwdriver for this. It's just easy to get it in. And you can control how much torque is applied. And I don't uh, have this torque setting up very high at all because I put these on by hand. And when you have a tight one or one that won't go on square, you just need to work at it to get it to get it started there we go so when you think you're in the right place get it located where you want and I'll just nip them up by hand if you over tighten these you'll pull the guides out or damage them we're not interested in that. What we're interested in is just making sure that it's not going to move. And that's no problem at all. You have to remember you're pulling it down on, an, on a lot of surface area. So, you know, she's not going anywhere. So one of the other things I've got uh, already fitted on the mill, um, which you can't see at the moment, uh, is a face mill because we're going to take a big cut. Normally I use a fly cutter, but uh, I'll reposition and get a better shot. Okay, with a better shot in view, what we can now see is the face mill I'm using. It's not touching the head at the moment. That's just wound down so we're somewhere near near where we need to be and then what I'm now doing is I'm putting a gauge stop on so I can determine how much I've got to take off and then I can monitor my progress
that's just a piece of metal and that's locked into position and I'll use that in a minute to uh, measure down to with a depth gauge and then uh, write down my dimensions so I know how much to machine off without going too far okay one of the next things I need to do is to put this machine into high gear so I'll do that by adjusting the uh, the gearbox on the head of the machine and then set the RPM for the cutter so we do that and we can do that over the workpiece it's not a problem go the right way right, that's about the right speed lovely So we'll get the uh, cutter over the edge of the work and then we'll touch off. That's plenty good enough. And we'll take a reasonable cutter width, full width of the head. There we go. And that should enable us just to do two passes, which is fantastic, up and down. Right, good. So lock the table. Start the machine and then touch off. Right, that gets us somewhere to uh, that gets us on zero. So I knew zero, and now what I'll do is I'll measure down to the stop and take a reading and then write that down so we have ooh, 165 can't see that from there. 165. Just make a note of that. 165 on the bed of the machine. And we want to take 40. So that will leave 125. And then actually I need to leave 10 thou on. So I'm, my target is 135 because I want to change the cutter up 135. Uh, and then take a, a few passes with the fly cutter to give me a nice finish. Right, let's get cutting. Okay, so now we've uh, finished with the face mill, we'll just check how much we've taken off. And our new reading is um, 135, so we start at 165, so that is uh, the correct amount off, 30 thou. So now that leaves enough, another 10 thou for the, um, the next cutter, which we'll put the finish on.
The face mill leaves the surface quite rough um, and with a, uh, an overlap um, an overlap in the middle. So uh, we now need to put a fly cutter up to put a nice finish on that. We can see the fly cutter cleans the whole head up in one pass. Okay. So now we're pretty much down to size and I'm just gonna take a very slight back cut uh, and that is the cut will only happen on the back side of the um, fly cutter and this gives a nice finish uh, which is acceptable uh, to run with a gasket. As you can see the fly cutter doing its work and then the back cut is there. It's a lovely finish, no chatter and perfect and nice and flat for our gasket. Okay, with the uh, machining done, as you can see, that's a nice finish. Um, I just now need to uh, chamfer the holes, chamfer the chambers, and then run a file around the outside, and she's uh, ready to assemble. Okay, chamfering. The idea here is not to uh, put huge chamfers on, but just to break the edge. We'll take a needle file and just break the edge around the chamber to get rid of that sharp edge which can burn. And then that can also promote cracking to leave that sharp edge. So the best thing to do with all the sharp edges on any hot area of the cylinder head is just to carefully break that edge and I use just a needle file to do that. Incidentally I did uh, measure the head and we've hit exactly 125 so it's had 40 thou off it which is exactly where I wanted it to be. So all we need to do now is run a file around the outside and the head can be assembled. Some people ask, uh, you know, is a, is a Bridgeport style milling machine the right machine to be skimming ahead on? And, you know, uh, perhaps there's some rock in the table as it moves from one side of the machine to the other. Well, if you look after your machine and your machine set properly, you won't notice that. If your machine's worn out, then yes, I would say that that would be the case. But I've just machined this one. And I've got 2.708. And believe it or not, I've got the same 2.708 right at the other end of the head. So that indicates that that has uh, definitely not machined the bow in that head. And it's the same thickness all the way across. So I have obviously checked it in the middle as well. So uh, as I say, you can skim a cylinder head on that type of machine. Um, but the machine has to be in good condition. And you also have to know how to get it to work that way. Okay, I hope you found that useful. Um, there is a number of ways of uh, skimming cylinder heads, but this is the way I do it and it works for me. Anyway, uh, as ever, please like and subscribe and I'll see you soon. Take care.